this is a really good story. <laughs> All right. In late 2010, uh, during year two of the Barack Obama presidency, conservatives all over the country were outraged that President Obama had the nerve, the gall, to go on vacation. He's actually sho uh, shoehorning the job of the presidency into his busy schedule of going on vacation, listening to the comic stylings of George Lopez, swaying to Paul McCartney, playing golf, shooting hoops, taking smokes. What else is this guy doing? Is he ever working? Is he ever working? The President Obama takes too much vacation thing uh, was not just confined to the right wing fringe uh, and Fox News. It really became a mainstream Republican critique. His idea of a hands-on approach to the economy is getting a grip on his golf club. Uh, he, uh, he's going off for 17 days in, in Hawaii. He'll be playing a lot of golf. <laughs> Hawaii. You believe that guy? Why would anybody go there? Republicans have been incredulous and outraged every single time President Obama and his family have gone on vacation. From the very, very beginning of his presidency, in that second year of his presidency, look, this was then being mad again at that time about him going to Martha's Vineyard. What was never really noted in all of that fuming outrage uh, was that this is how much time President Obama had taken at that point in his presidency uh, compared to his predecessor, George W. Bush. That's their comparative vacation time by that point into the presidency. Doesn't matter though, right? Obama's lazy. That guy never works. You know what else President Obama does? He puts his feet up on the desk at work. Earlier this year, the conservative website, The Drudge Report, posted this photo of the president on the phone in the Oval Office with his foot up on the desk. And the right lost its collective mind. It was disgraceful. It was offensive. It was, it was exactly what lots of presidents before him had done without upsetting anyone. This is called Obama derangement syndrome, right? It's when common sense and logic and the ability to simply Google something vanishes. It surrenders before the superior force of just incoherent, blinding disdain for this particular president. Today, a new one. That's a doozy. Today, the American right is outraged that President Obama removed the words under God from the Gettysburg Address. Did you hear that? Oh, my God. Did you hear? Did you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. When Obama recited the Gettysburg Address for Ken Burns to be included in a PBS documentary, Obama left out under God from his reading of the passage that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. He left out under God. He left out under God. This was a thing on the right today, all over the right, not just on AM radio. Look, Obama removes God from Gettysburg Address. Uh, that was at a website called Breitbart. Or this one, um, Obama omits God from Gettysburg Address reading uh, on the right-wing blogs. Um, on this one, watch, President Obama leaves out an important word in his reading of the Gettysburg Address. God. That was on right-wing radio. Uh, Obama delivers Gettysburg Address on YouTube, leaves out under God. The conservative Daily Caller website was apparently so heated about their version of this story that they had the managing editor of the whole website write up their article about it. Uh, this was the headline at National Review Online. Obama cuts under God out of Gettysburg Address. The conservative media criticism website Mediaite also covered it under the guise of covering the outrage about it. President Obama omits God. Yeah, the right just had its hair on fire about this today. How dare President Obama alter the language of the Gettysburg Address to remove its reference to God? Yeah, he did not do that. The Gettysburg Address is one of those speeches where a few different versions exist. Nobody taped it, if you know what I mean. At least five different versions of the Gettysburg Address are in circulation at any given time, which is why you often hear the speech recited a little bit differently each time you hear it. Well, when the documentary filmmaker Ken Burns put together his compilation of lots of different people, including actors and politicians and news anchors and TV hosts, reading the Gettysburg Address, he published for this project all five major known drafts of the speech. And he let it be publicly known that he asked President Obama specifically to read a very early draft called the Nicolay Draft. And that draft does not include the phrase, under God, which is why President Obama did not include the phrase, under God, in what he read. Period. End of story. 
In America, at least, that would be the end of the story. In conservative media land to stand, though, this scandal will never die because President Obama killed God! Everybody freak out! Folks at Media Matters first noticed this story today, and they have since been posting all of the embarrassed corrections from all of the conservative media outlets that ran head first toward this story that did not exist. Not all of them are apologizing yet, though. And honestly, why would they? The stuff's been working for them for years. Amazing. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Have a great night. The Rachel Maddow Show, weeknights at 9 Eastern on MSNBC.